The college football playoff is out. The committee has spoken. Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Notre Dame will play in the seventh edition of the college football playoff. But are we actually crowning a legitimate champion? Is the playoff format as it stands right now truly the best we can do in college football? Today, Adam Record and I discuss. Well, let's just get right down to brass tacks, Adam. Let's talk about your reaction to the four teams that made it in. What do you think this year? Uh, lame. <laughs> if, you, if you really, if you really want to know what my reaction is to it, I mean, it, lame in the fact that it's the four teams. I think once the year started going, we all knew would be there at the end. You yeah. know, yeah. not really any surprises, no shockers. Uh, nothing, just pretty much the same, same three teams as last year, uh, or sorry, um, an SEC team as last year, yeah. Clemson, Ohio State, and then Notre Dame, you know, this year. So as always, it's kind of the same format. So pretty lame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, when you look at the preseason poll this season, you had uh, number one, Clemson, number two, Ohio State, number three, Alabama in the preseason. And then your one exception to that is going to be Notre Dame, who came in ranked number 11. But uh, it's worth noting that Notre Dame, this is the first year that they were going to play a full ACC schedule as opposed to being independent and just having uh, a, an agreement with the ACC to play a certain number of games. This was the first year that they were going to be eligible to actually play in the ACC championship. So... It was kind of an unprecedented situation, so it was hard for, for the AP to actually figure out where they might be. Um, so I think it had more to do with that than the fact that they really thought that Notre Dame was not going to be this good. So I agree with you. We're pretty much looking at a situation where the AP basically called it, and something that I want to get into this video is it feels like every year the AP basically calls their shot at the beginning and I think that has more to do with the over-reliance on preseason rankings than it does the AP really knowing what they're doing and placing the teams up at the top. What do you think? Um, honestly, I would I would agree. And actually, before I dive more into the point, because I don't want to misspeak on this, but do you have where LSU was preseason ranked this year? This season, LSU is preseason number four. Four. Okay, perfect. So then that leads into my point as, yes, I think you're absolutely correct on that. I think um, a lot of people overhyped LSU, but in reality, you know, LSU is kind of like an Alabama type program where they get a bunch of five star recruits and they can just churn in an product in and out product every single year. Yeah. You know, well, obviously, you know, COVID year a little bit a little bit weird. We've seen sports be a little bit weird. Obviously, LSU is the outlier in this case, and Notre, Notre Dame's the 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 in liar. <laughs> That's not correct, but you you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know they're they're the they're the one to take over. So I think everything that you said is correct. Is they basically they're like this is the shots that they call it. And I I think maybe my only just to be a devil's advocate here on the mm. on agreeing with you, but then to to refute the point is that I think if they really really were to stick with this two SEC team. In the playoff thing, as they did in the preseason poll, they would have put an A and M, yeah, um, over Notre Dame. But yeah. other than that, I think I think you know, yeah, I'm, well, I'm pretty much with what you're saying. There's here. there's two kind of there's two things to talk about here, and and they kind of they intertwine here. So you mentioned Texas A and M, and that's going to be the team that a lot of you watching this video will think should have gotten in over Notre Dame. And I think it's worth noting uh, Notre Dame was preseason number 11, Texas A&M was preseason number 13. So the, there's kind of these two competing ideas that the I, what I'm saying is that the the playoff committee looks at the preseason rankings and they use that as kind of a basis to go to to judge how all of the teams do. And I'll get more into that when we specifically talk about it a little later in the video. But to start talking specifically about really the two teams that didn't make it, that a lot of people feel like really should have made it, those mm -hmm. being Texas A&M and Florida, really, uh, being the two teams that were up there. And then we can also talk about, of course, Coastal Carolina, um, and we will. 
But I think that, you know, the, the point to be made here is the way that the that the playoff committee has already told us that they put the teams in, the way that they look at their teams. And so I would argue that, to me, it was obvious that Texas A&M was not going to get in there unless they beat Alabama, basically because Texas A&M was ranked so low at the beginning yeah. of the season. <laughs> There's, I mean... I, I'm not going to disagree with that. It's <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of screwy how they're doing it, you know. Let me explain myself a little better to to get into this point. So my my hypothesis here, my theory, is that the AP poll at the beginning of the season, you have your, you have your AP preseason poll, and what happens is the college football playoff committee uses that poll as the measuring stick for how the rest of the teams end up doing during the regular season. So your first thought is to say, well, the preseason poll is the preseason poll, kind of like in college basketball. It's just a prediction. But then the teams end up playing their games, and that's how we figure out who the top teams are. My argument is because in college football you only play 12 or 13 games as opposed to in college basketball you're playing over 30, the difference is here is that because you get so few games – against other teams specifically other teams that are that are at the top of the rankings outside of your conference the college football playoff committee uses the ap preseason poll as the measuring stick and that heavily influences how they think teams have done throughout the season so the reason why in my opinion notre dame made it uh this season and texas a&m didn't despite the fact that they have similar records notre dame's 10 and 1 texas a&m's 8 and 1 Notre Dame was ranked number 11 preseason. Texas A&M was ranked number 13. Notre Dame has a win over the preseason number two team, that being Clemson. And Texas A&M does not have that win over a preseason top four team. And even whether or not Clemson is actually one of the four best teams in the nation, the fact that Notre Dame has a win over that team that the AP decided they thought was going to be a top four team in the nation. That's the reason why Notre Dame made it. That's my argument. Hard to argue there with that. I mean, there are people that could say then, you know, with that, I mean, you could do the eye test, you know, and maybe my counterpoint would be, you know what, like, look, Notre Dame played Clemson in a close game earlier in the year that Notre Dame did win. But then you're like, well, Clemson didn't have Trevor Lawrence, you know, and you know what? Trevor Lawrence Mm -hmm. is a game changer. You know, at least on the college football scene, he is a game changer. And we saw that the second time around, yep. Clemson looked more confident. Uh, I mean, obviously, it looked like they changed their game plan just a little bit. But, you know, when you have Trevor Lawrence playing, you can virtually do anything on the college scene. And yeah. Notre Dame, I mean, what was the final score? It was like 34-10 or something, I think. They didn't even put more than 10 points up on Clemson. Like, it, it, it's going to be the same thing as two years ago when they were in the playoffs. They're just going to get smacked around again, you know? And I think that was by Clemson again. So, yeah, that's where, that's where it was I'm leaning Clemson, towards. It like, to in the playoffs We've years seen ago. Notre Dame. They went one and one. Yes, like you said, yes, they did beat a, a top four ranked team in the nation and in the preseason poll or whatever. But, like, hey, why, why are we – it's four teams yeah. – Notre Dame's already, in my eyes, that loss the other day already proves to me Notre Dame, yes, they're a one-loss team, but Notre Dame's not ready for the college football playoffs. Let's give Texas A&M a chance. Let's give the running back, I think his name, his last name is Spiller, and let's give that Texas A&M defense that's actually looked pretty solid every single game they've played in, except for against when they played Bama. Let's maybe give them another shot at Bama now that they've picked up some, some steam, you know? I don't know. Yeah, well, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting because again, there's kind of two competing philosophies here. Uh, because the way that I think about it, if we're going to crown a national champion, I want that national champion to feel as legitimate as they possibly can. And to me, the way that that happens is you take the four best teams, regardless of the eye test or what we think they're going to do. You take the four best teams and you put those teams in the playoff. However, if we were to just take the four best records in the country right now, then the playoff would be Alabama, Ohio State, Cincinnati, and Coastal Carolina. Those are the the four best teams that are undefeated, and the number five would be San Jose State. 
because they're they're seven and zero. So those are your five undefeated teams in the nation right now, and mm-hmm. that also presents a little bit of a problem, you know, because even though I'm saying to me you you have to prove it, you have to earn your way there. That being said, you know, do we really think that San Jose State is going to be on the level of Alabama or on the level of Clemson? You know, in and, and go ahead, go ahead. And and here, yeah. No, no, sorry. I just wanted to interject there and hear me out on this. And I don't know if you want to talk. Oh, about I think this I know now where you're going, and I want to talk about it now later. Um, and we discuss <laughs> kind of. Okay, let's do it then. Um, I think. I think. A, I think this shows two things based on what you're saying. It shows two things that if we're going to take all the undefeated records, it shows the massive gap mm-hmm. that college football has in talent, per se. Give, I mean, no disrespect to Cincinnati or Coastal, Car- Coastal Carolina, but Alabama, 11 and 0, Ohio State, even at 6 and 0, I think would still smack around Cincinnati and Coastal Carolina. But. This is where I'm a sports fan, a fan. I like these college playoffs. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm saying, let's expand it. You know, let's put, let's put, great. We have Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Notre Dame. Awesome. Let's also get AM in there. Let's get Oklahoma in there. Let's get Cincinnati in there. And then, heck, for the eighth seed, let's, yeah. uh, let's get Coastal Carolina. Yeah. You know, let's throw seven, eight can be the other last two undefeated teams. You know, that way, then you have number seven or number eight, Coastal Carolina, in this example, going against Alabama. And you know what? Alabama may beat them sure. 52 to 20 or whatever the score against Texas A&M, their game against Texas sure. A&M was at the end of the, or at the beginning of the year. Great. You know what? Awesome. Do you know what they proved to us? That they just did the same thing to Coastal Carolina that they did to Texas A&M. That still, again, goes back to A, that there's still a huge gap in college football. But... B, right. you're giving it sports. Anything can happen. You're giving the prob- a higher probability a chance that something right. crazy could happen, and we all love it. You can't deny well, that. Well, sure, we yeah. If you're, if you're a fan, and, you're a fan and now both of us have been through it <laughs> as fans of our different <laughs> college teams, yeah, it, it sucks. But as an objective fan of sports in general, I absolutely agree with you. And this is this is really the point that I want to get into, and, and you make a great one. Um, the College Football Committee has already they, – they've shown us now definitively that – they, the college football committee does not care what your record is. They care about who you've played to a point. They care if you have two losses. So if you're undefeated or if you have one loss, the tiebreaker is what conference are you in? If you're in the SEC, even as a one-loss team, you get it mm-hmm. over an undefeated team not from the SEC or from the ACC or whatever the case may be. If you've got two losses – then you know even if even if you have played a much tougher schedule then a team with one loss will get in over you so there's inconsistency there and to me that has fueled this whole idea this whole thing that the preseason poll is used as the measuring stick for the rest of the season because what the committee has said year after year after year is that they they are actually disincentivizing teams to play good teams non-conference because they've shown us the two lost teams will not make the playoffs Mm -hmm. and so if you are a team preseason on the outside looking in let's say this year you are let's say you're florida this year your preseason number nine you got a great team you got kyle trask maybe the best quarterback in the nation uh him and trevor lawrence i think are one and two right now um and so you got them so florida could be saying mm-hmm. you know what we've got a good team going forward we want to schedule uh we want to schedule usc uh going forward we want to schedule a big team or we want to schedule uh we want to schedule oregon you know, we want to schedule Penn State. We want to schedule great teams going forward that are going to give us that statement win. But if we lose that game, we got to go undefeated for the rest of the year. And even then, we might not make it. That's what the committee's saying. The committee's saying, no, no, no. If you're Florida, we would rather you schedule, um, mm-hmm. you know, Alabama Teachers College and, and beat them a thousand to nothing. We'd rather you do that <laughs> than schedule an actual good team, which then leads back to the idea that the preseason poll, you're disincentivizing any of the top 25 to play each other 
in the pre in in non-conference so the only time that they would face each other is in conference we have no measuring stick for how good these conferences are relative to each other so let's say the year let's say the year that ucf went undefeated yes do we know how good ucf is as compared to everyone else their bowl game would suggest that they're pretty damn good because they beat up on auburn that year so their bowl game would suggest that they actually might may have been a top four team in the nation but because Every team in the country was that had a chance at making the playoffs was disincentivized from playing UCF because the NCAA told them if you lose, you you it's very difficult for you to make the playoffs. It doesn't matter who you lost to, it's very difficult for you to make the playoffs. No team would schedule UCF. You know, even though you do have to schedule a few years in advance, still no team would take that game. So to your point, I absolutely agree. If you're if we're talking about let's find the legitimate champion to say this year to Cincinnati, Coastal Carolina, Texas A&M, no, you don't get in. You don't get in. We didn't think you were good enough. Why didn't we think you were good enough? Well, because you weren't ranked, you weren't ranked really highly in the preseason. That's why we didn't think. Well, what if you were wrong in the preseason? No, it doesn't matter. We still we still don't think you were good enough. You know, it, it's if you were to go to eight teams. Then the format, I think, I think you and I would both agree on the format. You would have the Power Five uh, conference champions, each of them. So the conference title games would actually mean something. I think we agree on that. So this mm-hmm. year, you would have Alabama SEC yep. champion, Clemson yep. ACC yep. champion, Ohio State Big Ten champion. Um, you would have Oklahoma Big Twelve champion and Washington as uh, Pac twelve champion. So you'd have those five teams, and then you would get your at-large bids. And mm-hmm. so you'd talk about teams, Notre Dame's in there, Texas A&M, Cincinnati, Coastal Carolina, Florida. Those are really the teams that would that would be in that discussion. Maybe Indiana out of the Big Ten. Those are the teams that would be in that discussion. And to me, to have those top eight, let's say, you know, to use your example, let's say Cincinnati makes it as number eight, and Alabama beats the tar out of them in their game. Well, then, you know, Cincinnati – they, they weren't going to win the national championship, but at least we know that. And now the problem is, as we saw with UCF a few years ago, UCF will go around claiming we're the true national champions. And to me, I can't I, I don't like that they say that, but I can't argue with it because maybe they would have won the national championship. I don't know if we could if we could figure out who would yep. win the national championship yep. before uh, before the season even begins then the preseason AP number one would always win the national championship, which doesn't happen. I think it's only happened like once since the college football playoff began. And even then, in the college football playoff, the number one seed has only won one national championship. In the six years of the uh, of the college football playoff, the number one seed has won yep. it one time. So we even even when we even when we have no more games until the college football playoff we still don't do a good job of trying to figure out who the number one team is so to me to say to disqualify this number of teams just because of what we think they might do in the playoff to me is a joke and it's the reason why even though the ncaa tournament is single elimination and there's an argument to be made if it's single elimination it's not crowning a real champion in college basketball you've got the 68 best teams in the country Somewhere in there is going to be the national champion. That's somewhere in the top 68, you're going to find the best team in the country. You know, and, and in college football, you've got four. And to me, that's not a good way to find the best team in the country. It's just not. I I agree. And expanding off that point, basically what you're boiling it down to, just to, you know, make it all concise, is we don't have enough sample size to determine the true yeah. national champion. In college football is basically what you're saying and i totally agree with that and honestly you know um i like i i test wise like me watching college football this year um you know as much as i was able to i think florida could if this was expanded to eight teams florida would have mm-hmm. a case maybe at seven slash eight and i know people might come at me that that's a little crazy i even thought that if they beat bama they should make it into the playoffs this year even though they'd have two losses, and that'd be a first time for uh, the, the college football playoffs. But you know what? It, <laughs> you, you had Shoegate last week. Player th- I've just, I mean, as a fan, it could be biased, but that's just ridiculous, you know? Like, the amount of times I've seen shoes thrown is plenty, and 
you don't, you don't see other penalties flying out for that, but that's besides the point. You know, let's say they, they I mean, Florida mm-hmm. just yeah. lost it by six yeah. to Alabama. By six. I don't think Alabama's had that close of a game outside of the college football playoffs uh, in years. Maybe since <laughs> maybe since it was Tim Tebow against Alabama or whatever, you know, like like I'm ser- like I'm serious, like like tell me the last time Alabama's had a serious threat to the crown. Yeah, uh, maybe LSU outside last LSU year. Was, that was that was pretty you much. Know? But then ever like, since then, Alabama's been in the playoff uh, every that's year. The, that's legitimate. I mean, Florida has, in my opinion, the second best offense in the country, <laughs> and I don't I'm want sure, anyone I'm sure to tell me will. otherwise. It's been Florida's defense is the issue, you know. Right. It, go ahead. You can't. You can't. You can't tell me otherwise. Uh, I mean, Alabama is just awesome. Te- Texas A&M is only in the conversation because their defense is insane. The different pressures, what they do, they're insane. And I believe the running back I've mentioned earlier, Spiller, is insane. I don't think Kellen Mond it, d- deserves any mm-hmm. praise or anything. He's had an okayish yeah. year, you know. He's but, a but you don't get it. You don't get into the playoffs year. based off your quarterback. No, you get into the playoffs the based off had, your team. But like, exactly what you're saying. Your team, exactly. And and the team as a whole, he has weapons on offense. They obviously have a running back. But that defense is sick. And I would have loved to see that defense right. personally in the playoffs. Even though they have two less wins than Notre Dame, I think they have a, they have a, yeah. a quality win against Florida, in my opinion. And even though they got kind of destroyed by Alabama earlier in the year, yeah. you know, they've looked and, very thorough, and, very convincing. And to your point. The past few weeks. I, I agree with that. Dame, and, and to your point, you say. the fact that we're sitting here having to make this distinction to say Notre Dame's 10 and 1, Texas A&M's 8 and 1, Notre Dame makes it over Texas A&M. Here's all the arguments that Notre Dame would have over A&M. Here's all the arguments that A&M would have over the Fighting Irish. When to me, there's no reason why they both couldn't be playing for a national championship. If you had an 18 playoff, I would venture a guess that both of these teams would totally. make it as at-large bids, and I and I don't think you could argue with that. And so, to be sitting here after six years and soon to be seven years of a four-team college football playoff where this happens every season, there are a couple teams that you would say, I think that they deserve to be in. I, I think that they deserve to be in. I mean, you it's four teams. I, generally speaking, I take a lot of pride in being able to suss out arguments on both sides of an issue and 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 so almost anything that we talk about i like to be able to try to think about what the argument is for the other side you know i actually cannot think of an argument for the college football playoff to not be eight teams i mean what is the argument it'll make you too much money it would be too competitive it it, it, you know it it would (laughs) make too many games meaningful you know i mean this this has been the problem with the college football playoff being four teams no games mean anything. If you're ranked outside of the top, outside the top ten, a preseason, it, you have to go undefeated, and even then, you still might not get it. So it doesn't matter if you are if you are not in a Power Five, you just might yeah. as well not play. I mean, you're not going to make the college football playoff no matter what you do, unless you're Notre Dame. Yeah, that's it. Otherwise, you just just don't play. If you yeah. are ranked outside the top ten, you better go undefeated. Because in the in the in the seven year history of the college football playoff, four teams that were pre, that were ranked outside the top ten preseason have made the college football playoff. Twice it was Notre Dame. So, you know, it, it, so if you lose a game, if you lose one game, then you know what? You're done. You're done. You're just you're not going to make it. And to me, there is no argument to say that we shouldn't be looking at an eight team playoff right now. I'm sorry, I, I I don't see an argument. If there is one. Please let me know in the comments, or, or Adam, you can tell me if you think of one. I can't think of one. I mean, I can't think of one either. I mean, I'm even, I'm even sitting here. I, I'm actually, I'm literally just looking over Ohio State schedule for this year, and we included. I'm saying not us, but like we, like the College Football Playoffs included a six-win team. Yeah. Into the like, let, like let's fathom that right here. Like you're telling me that there was that yeah. an eight and one Texas A and M team, what is not better than a six and zero Ohio State team? Traditionally, Ohio sure. State is very good. They're not really talked about because they've only played six games this year. You know what? I'll, I'll give them a lot of credit. I think they should be included. I think my whole thing, and as much as I hate to say it, I think 
it's really just been disenchanting and it's really brought to light the discussion of expanding the playoffs because a team like Texas mm-hmm. A&M deserves it. You know, it's not about what the teams in front of Texas A&M have done. You know, it's more of like what yeah. they've done for themselves. And I think they deserve it, you know, and it, it, it's just it's crazy. You know, it's just crazy to think of an argument out like like you said it's just you can't even fathom an argument to of why you shouldn't expand it you know honestly expanding it could be the greatest thing ever because right. it I mean, would I bring in more money i i don't you know? i don't see wow right exactly Amazing. and i don't People see how money. it wouldn't you know i mean the w- what you're saying is we would have more games between the best teams in the nation and not only that but now the conference championship games really mean something. I mean, really, really mean something. So let's let's take a look. I mean, think about the Pac-12. That championship game that ended up being between, I said Washington, I meant Oregon. It ended up being, being between Oregon and USC. Yeah, Oregon and USC. I was going to correct you. The loser you, but yeah, of that yeah, yeah. game does not make the playoffs. <laughs> In an eight-team system, the loser doesn't make it. The winner does. So that team, that game is essentially a playoff game. Losers, losers out, winners in. This year, that game means nothing. It means absolutely nothing because the winner was never going to get get into the college football playoff, and we all know that. So it meant nothing, and and mm-hmm. so that's just one example. And and ev- almost every year, there there are multiple conference championship games that would be like that. That would det- the loser goes home, the loser would not make an at large bid, and the winner gets in. So not only do you have double the number of games in the playoff itself, but you also have all of the conference championship games that now mean mean a whole lot more than they do currently under our four team system. And so, you know, you're you're focusing on Texas A&M as the team that really proves why this four team system doesn't work anymore. And I agree with you on that, but I also want to look at Coastal Carolina because I think they prove a lot. You look at their schedule and you'll see I mean, okay, so they have a win over Kansas. That doesn't really mean much. Kansas is a Power Five school, but I mean, come on, it's Kansas. I mean, <laughs> we know we we know what it is. But you know, they have wins over they have wins on the road at Louisiana. I watched that right. game. That was a great game, and Coast, and and they had fans at that game as well. And uh, Coastal Carolina was able to eat that one out. Georgia Southern is a solid team. Troy is a solid team. They ended up beating Troy. They have uh, they have a win over number eight BYU. So, to me, when you look at this. I just think to look at Coastal Carolina and to say you are 11 and 0, you have by by wins, you have the best the set, tied for the best record in the country with Alabama, right? By winning percentage. And and in the win column and to look at Coastal Carolina and say we don't believe that you would be competition for Alabama. So you don't get in. You've proved your you've proved that you will beat any team placed in front of you. And no team will schedule you because, as I said before, every team is disincentivized from scheduling any team remotely good in non-conference. You've proved all that, but we still don't right. think that you would be competition for Alabama. Well, look, what if the committee's wrong? What if they're wrong? We will never know. Maybe Coastal Carolina is the best team in the nation this year. I'm, I'm not saying they are. I wouldn't make that prediction, but maybe they are. It's possible because, like you said earlier, this is sports. Anything can happen. So what if they were? We'll never know. We'll never know because they don't get a chance. They don't get a chance to face Alabama. They don't get a chance to face Clemson. They don't get a chance to face Ohio State. We'll never know how good Coastal Carolina could be. We'll never know how good Central Florida actually was the year that they went Mm -hmm. undefeated. We'll never know with these things. And that, to me, is the real issue, the central Mm -hmm. issue here. Beyond everything that I've said about the preseason AP poll, being used as the measuring stick beyond all these issues that we're talking about with Texas A&M, which I absolutely agree with you on and all this, the biggest, the central biggest issue is that no matter who you are, if you don't play in the power five, it doesn't matter what you do. You will never make the college football playoff. It doesn't matter. It will never, ever, ever happen. And to me that completely cuts against everything that collegiate sport is supposed to be about. Yeah, hundred percent. And honestly, while you're saying all that, and I totally agree with it all, I think we can use some mm-hmm. examples from the NCAA basketball tournament to further prove our points. Two examples, and 
forgive me if I get these records just slightly wrong. I just glazed over them a little bit. But Buffalo mm-hmm. was, I think, 31 and 3 going into the 2019 tournament last year, playing against Arizona State. And I don't remember yep. the record. I didn't look it up, but they beat them in the first round of the playoffs. They were the higher seed, but that is a team in a conference never remotely even right. talked about. And right. Arizona State's coming from the Pac 12, you know? You know, and then Buffalo goes on and plays sure. Texas Tech and gets absolutely walloped. You know, but Texas Tech I, they made, made it, it to the to finals, the actually. Final four, I believe it was. The finals, that's right. So, yep, so you're telling mm-hmm. me that they lost by 20 to a team that made it to the finals. You know what? At least it showed that they could compete. And I remember that yeah. game pretty well that yeah. they did compete in that game. You know, it wasn't a wash. And then, second examples. Murray State, another team that maybe is like Coastal Carolina. I think Coastal Carolina is actually pretty darn good at football every year, um, if I remember correctly. Or maybe I'm thinking of soccer for them. But regardless, you know, whether it's one-off year or good, yeah. whatever, they had Jean Morant, you know, and they beat Marquette. They beat Marquette. Oh, yeah. And Marquette was highly ranked. Yeah. I mean, let alone it was a 12v5 seed, but Marquette's a yeah. highly ranked yeah. basketball school typically. Yeah. And they beat them by almost 20. Granted, they went to the next game and got yeah. absolutely destroyed by Florida State, you know, and I think maybe that proved a little bit about the conferences, but hey, they won a game, and I bet you, I bet you, I'm further like, further going yeah. off your point, I bet you we would maybe have something like that in the college football playoff where maybe, it may be not, maybe never a 1v8, um, I just don't, I just, realistically in football, I don't see that happening because yeah. Like I, I said, the gap I mean, is, is too big. Is the gap is the gap B, between depending one on the versus year, eight in college but, football bigger than the gap between a number one versus a number sixteen in college basketball? Well, well, well hear me, hear me out on this. I think, I mean, I think yes, but also I think, I think if you're saying that the true number eight, like you're not, you're like Florida finished the year. What was it, seven? Yeah, they finished the year seven this year, and they were eight and three. And you have Cincinnati that finished the year. Yeah, what was it? Eighth seed at nine and zero. Oh, you know, uh, great. You know, I don't think like Florida obviously is going to give a better game than I think Cincinnati would to Alabama. That's what I'm saying. But I think maybe like a three v six college football playoff matchup. Whoever that six team is, whether it's a group of five school or maybe mm-hmm. a power five school, I think it could happen. You know, I just I don't personally see a one v eight happening. If if this was to happen, but sure. I I think we could sure. see something maybe two v seven, three v six, you know, totally. Especially if that six six seven seed yeah. well, is uh, a group of five school. I mean, obviously, it, this the playoffs could be expanded mm-hmm. and we stick with power five schools for all eight spots. Then maybe the one v eight could happen. It personally, but I never I don't think I'll ever see a group of five. Well, I don't. I mean, beating the number would... one seed. I, I think that's I, I think uh, yeah I, I think that's but a whole other to. issue about whether or not a power five uh, uh, a group of five could actually step up and beat you know a team like Alabama or Clemson. I think that's a separate issue altogether compared to the just the idea of giving them that opportunity. I mean the fact that they never do look number sixteen seeds to use your example in in basketball. Number 16 seeds were what, O oh, and 167 or whatever they were. And then and then UMBC beat Virginia. Now, <laughs> wild, that's a yeah. once in a lifetime thing. We might not see that for another 167 games. But does that mean that we just give the number one seeds a bye because we think they're going to beat the number 16 seed? No, you go out there and you play the game. That's the whole point. Sports are about playing the game and showing up when mm-hmm. it matters. And so you're yeah. talking about teams that made a big run from group of five or, or not even group of five schools this past year. I mean, I could go, I could take it even further than that. Let's look at teams that ran the table that were never expected to do that. VCU came from, I think, the 12 seed. George Washington came from a 12 seed to run the table. Louisville, the year that they won the national yep. championship, I believe was number eight, the, yep. year that, uh, the year that they did that, led by Peyton Siva, that whole team. I mean, and that's and to do exactly. that in college football, in college basketball, to make the Final Four, you have to win five games to make the Final Four. To win a national championship in college football, you got to get hot for three games in, in in an eight team playoff. You would get hot for three games to win a national championship. Are you telling me that Coastal Carolina, yep. Cincinnati, yep. UCF, Texas A and M, Florida, any of these teams, they couldn't get hot for three games and and make a run and win a, and, and win a championship? I think that could absolutely happen. 
I think that's absolutely within the realm of possibility. And I and I'd love I to see them get the opportunity. Point. I think it's shameful yeah, that we don't point. give them the opportunity to at least try. I think just just you know to your point, maybe maybe a group of five team could never beat Alabama or Clemson or Ohio State. Maybe they couldn't, but we won't know that until we see it happen. We can't just assume that they that they never will. And that's the justification yeah. for not making it eight teams. Is anyone really going to be mad if? You know, if the if the eight seed, let's say the eight seed is always a group of five team. Let's say the eight seed in our hypothetical extent, expanded playoffs is always sure. reserved to the best group of five team that there is. I don't think it should be that way, but let's say in, let's say hypothetically it is. Uh, right? It, well, would anyone just be the mad best case scenario? If we, yeah, have, totally. if we see that I'm every that. year, I mean, I look maybe maybe the eight seed gets pounded every year by by the by the top team. Is anyone mad that that's happening? I don't think so because no one's mad that number one seeds in the NCAA basketball tournament have to play 16s every year. No one's sitting here going, God, why do we have to watch this every year? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, maybe you just won't turn it on. That's fine. But is anyone mad that it's happening? No, because it's competitive. That's the whole point. No. Yep. 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 And these student athletes want to compete. They want to go out there and show – that they can, you know, a lot of them are playing and would love to become professional athletes. They want to show that they yep. can compete at the highest level at all times so that they can take that next step to mm -hmm. the next level. And I think that's great, you know? And, like, obviously, given this year, we were kind of chit-chatting before before this a little bit, but, like, the Cowboys are defeated yep. on O-line, you know? I'm just taking them for example because I know that the best. But, like, they're defeated on O-line. You're, like some of the guys, I don't even know where they went to, to school at, you know, but you know what? They're given this chance to take their to the next level step, whereas maybe maybe they played at a school that yeah. had competitive like competitive games always, you know? Doesn't yeah. have to be against the best opponent, but they were just competitive, you know? Now let's take it a step further and say that they're being nationally televised competitive games. You know, it's just, you know, you're adding more fuel yeah. to the fire yeah, for absolutely. some of these student athletes. And I think it's, it's worth know? noting so, that, it's worth noting and, just real quickly, the, no oh, other yeah. sport in in the NCAA has anything remotely like this no other sport would take the four best teams or if it is or if it's individual the four best competitors and just take those four and say this is for the national championship no other sport does that yeah totally agree and I think I mean just to expand off it maybe maybe we don't have to go expand to eight teams next year that's fine Maybe let's do six teams, you know, and we give one and two, whoever that is, mm -hmm. a bye. Let's see how that goes, you know. Let's let's just let's. Who's to say that we want to jump to eight teams? Because let let's think about this. Football, there isn't supposed to be a lot of games because, like, for right. basketball, we're talking right. about high high volume of games, high sample size. Football, even in the NFL, is twenty games max, twenty twenty one games max. If you make right. it to the right. Super Bowl, not including yeah. preseason. Competitive games. We'll just say 2021 yeah, no, games. Yeah, I you're think right on that. I might be... Yeah. Tw tw okay, yeah. So, I'm just trying to do quick math and visualize a playoff bracket in my head. But So, we're not we're not expecting there to be, you know, this to be expanded out to, like, 16 teams. Because yeah. I think that's going to maybe get that's, a little that's a, we, we can, crazy. Even we though can I take think a whole other video to talk about a potential 16-team think... college football playoff. <laughs> Exactly. That would have a lot of implications. I think that would have to mean a little bit of a shorter season, but like like some of the teams that played this year, like like you said, Alabama and Coastal Carolina, 11 and 0. They played 11 games. Typically previous years I'm looking right, at you LSU play, your, last your typical, year. Your typical your typical season is going to be 12 games. regular season and then they games played, and then if you play in a conference championship, you play 12 or 13, yep. sorry. Yep, and then a bowl game. You know, so you're already playing that What's to say that you don't add two more to the best eight teams in college football? They're playing. Yeah, they're playing. NFL they're playing an NFL regular season. Game. season essentially, you're playing. You're getting, maximum. You're, you're getting, playing sixteen games. Yeah. They, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It, it. It's not like, and you know what? We could start. I think the season. You could shift the season a week earlier. You know, because students are on campus by then. Mm -hmm. the student athletes are back like midsummer. Most of them, I think, you know, depending on the school that you were at or whatever, you know, you, you, it's not like they're not there. They can play. So, I mean, that's that's my case. I, test it. I think the next step is to test it with six and then go from there. I think eight could be good. I even think maybe 10 to 12 could be the ideal sweet spot. 16 
I mean, yeah. might be stretching it, but yeah. you know what? I'm I mean, not, I think I'm not. I think to for it, for the purposes of this, just talking about the college football playoff today, I I want to end this whole discussion and 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 my piece of it, and then you can add your thoughts with this hypothetical question: In an eight-team playoff, mm-hmm. Coastal Carolina, let's say Coastal Carolina is the number eight seed, Alabama's number one. So your quarterfinal game is 11-0 Alabama against 11-0 Coastal Carolina, all right? In reality, what is happening this year is Alabama is uh, Alabama's playing Notre Dame, and Coastal Carolina will be playing in the FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl against Liberty. Do you, does anyone out there honestly <laughs> believe that the ratings, the television ratings for the FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl on December 26th would be higher than Coastal Carolina against Alabama in the college football playoff? That's my hypothetical question. Yeah. (laughs) And I agree. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I agree. I I don't see why not. And you know what? I think if they were in that college football playoff, it wouldn't be Liberty. No, that's what I'm saying. They'd they'd be playing Alabama. It would be Coastal Carolina versus Alabama. (laughs) <laughs> it's, yeah, I would. Let me tell you. Let me tell you exactly. right now. Oh, I would yeah, watch exactly. that game. It, I would watch Coastal Carolina versus Alabama, even if, even if in all likelihood Coastal Carolina would probably lose by thirty points. But maybe they wouldn't, and I I would watch to find out. There is no chance that I am turning on the FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl. I mean, there's no chance in hell I'm watching that game. I'm sorry. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Coastal Carolina or Liberty. I just don't care. Hey, I'll let I'll let you all know if he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll let you all know sure. if he Call is. Call me out if I'm lying, sure, but so. I'm telling you it's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, it, it's hard to argue that. I mean, we're on the same same wavelength here for this. You know, it, it, it it's just crazy that the NCA hasn't done this yet. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's a little bit more to it. Having worked for college athletics, it's always you know. It, I mean, I can't say always, but just being brutally honest, but there is always something that has to do with the student athletes and school comes first. You know, I get it. Great. That's awesome. These kids do need an education. I completely believe in that and agree with that. Great. You know what? But what's to say them playing one more game is going to hurt their education, especially since these bowl games are coming in (laughs) winter break for every school in the country. That's a great point. You know, like, what's what's adding two games during winter break? They're already not seeing most of their families, unless they're from the area of the school they attend. They're already not seeing their families, so why not make it worth their while and make it two games? Oh, that's, I'm just that's saying. as compelling an argument as no. I've heard, and, and, I, and one that I absolutely agree with. And uh, I think that this, this particular video, I didn't know. Exa- I, I thought we were just going to be talking about, you know, one, two, three, four this season. Instead, we get this whole discussion about expanding the college football playoff. But I think it's a valuable one. And I think uh, these kinds of things, these kind of changes, they don't happen unless we do get a lot of people, you know, talking, whether it be on social media or talking to their friends in certain circles about the fact that I think, you know, just to be brutally honest, what's going on right now is unacceptable. I don't think that a 14 playoff should be acceptable when it comes to crowning a national champion. It would barely be acceptable to crown a conference champion, you know? So I, I think discussions like this are, are really, really valuable uh, to potentially making a change to college football as a whole. I think it's something that we should absolutely uh, be invested in wh- whether or not it happens next season or if it takes 10 years, I think it's something that's, that's very valuable to do. Um, and as we both said earlier, we don't see an argument for the reverse. I don't see an argument why you should stay four teams, but if you have one, please let us know in the comments. We always have discussion in the comments. As you know, if you've seen any of our videos before, um, and so we we really enjoy that. So please let us know if there's an argument that we missed to keep it four teams. Otherwise, we do stuff like this all the time. So, you know, subscribe. We appreciate you.